Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is paper 1-3 of October, November 2012. Now let's move on to question number one. So let's see what we have here. So here we have Venn diagrams. We have set P, Q, R. We have to shade the these sets, right? Now let's see. Here we have Q intersecting R union P. So first, let's look at the inside value. Q intersecting R will be this one right and then we have union p p will be p everything of p so this will be your answer for part one now for this one we have q union r which is this and this but here we have intersecting p so we only have this in common okay and that is part a of your question now for part b it is given that set b s f are such that this is school, boys, swimming team, and football. Now, question. Express each of the following statements in set notation. So, part one. All the students in football are boys. So, basically, football has to be a subset of boys. So, everything in football is inside of boys. So, that will be a subset of boys. Now, for part two. There are no students who are both in the swimming team and football team. So, pretty easy. They have, there's, a, there's a few ways to write this down, but we can choose the number of students in football and swimming team is zero. That is one way. Or you can write football and swimming team will be your empty set. Okay, that will be another way to write this as well. Now, uh, this is your question number one. Let's move on to question number two. So the rate of change of x with respect to t is given by this. So we write this down. dx by dt is given by 4 cos square t. Now part 1. Find the rate of change of x with respect to t when t equal to pi by 6. So pretty easy. So when t equal to pi by 6. Now first question is what is the value of pi by 6 if you guys want to know in degrees? because we know pi is 180 so pi by 6 so 80 180 sorry divided by 6 that will be 30 degrees so basically we're trying to find dx by dt when t is 30 degrees 4 cos pi by 6 square so now you have to know cos pi by 6 is an exact value which is root 3 over 2 Okay, so you will have 4 times 3 over 4, your answer will be 3. And this is your answer for part 1. Now for part 2, the rate of change of y with respect to t is given by this. So dy by dt is 3 sine t. Now question, using your results from part 1, which is this, find the rate of change of y with respect to x so we have to find dy by dx so now we have to use the chain rule as you can see we have dy on top we write dy on top we have dx at the bottom we write dy dx at the bottom so we have to connect these two by by dt okay because we have dy by dt and dx by dt so they are dt have our common in those two that's why now we know dt by dx is what? So here we have um, dx by dt is 3. So from this we can realize that dt by dx will be 1 over 3 from part 1. Now for this one, dy by dt, we have this. We have to replace the value of t by pi by 6. So pretty easy. So dy by dt at t equal to pi by 6, that will be 3 sine of pi by 6 that should be an exact value let's let's check so radians 3 sine pi by 6 that will be 1.5 okay so now going back to your equation dy by dt is equal to 1.5 times dt by dx is 1 over 3 your answer is 0 0.5 Okay, so this is your answer for question part two. 
Now let's move on to question number three. A committee of seven members is to be selected from six women and nine men. So everything together we have 15 people, right? So find the number of different committees that may be selected if, if first one, if there's no restriction. So pretty easy. From 15 people, we just choose seven. There's no restriction. That will be six, four, three, five. Now for part two, the committee must consist of two women and five men. Okay, so from the six women, we have to choose two women. And from the nine men, we have to choose five men. So six choose two times nine choose five. That will be 18, 90. Now for part three, the committee must contain at least one woman. So at least means one or more women. Now, so for this one, there's many ways to do this question. One is by um, having many options. For example, at least one woman means we can have one woman and we can have six men. We can have two women. We can have five men. Three women four men, four women, we can have three men, we can have five women, and then you can have um, two men, and then six women, and then we can have one man. Because we have six women in total, we cannot go more than six. So these will be the options available to add everything together to find the number of ways of selecting this. But now, if you want to, you can think about the other way, which is otherwise you can do. So otherwise, we can just take the total number of selection, which is in part one, six, four, three, five, minus the group where there is, what is the inverse of this? At least one woman is, inverse will be, which is less than one, which is zero women. So minus the group with zero women. So let's do that. Six, four, three, five, minus the group with zero women will be. So what is the number of selections for the group where we don't have any women? So we had six women and nine men. So if you don't want women, you just cancel out the women. From the nine men, we just have to choose the seven people. So you will have your answer. Six, four, three, five, minus nine, choose seven. That will be six, three nine nine so this is your answer for part three now this is the other method of finding your answer but if you want to you can always do that to find your answer which is you will do one by one so six women choose one times nine men choose six plus six choose two times nine choose five plus six choose three times nine choose four so you see you can either do that way or you can just do that to find the answer. You should be getting the same value here. And that is your question number three. Mm. Let's move on to question number four. So on the axis below for zero to pi, draw the graph of this. So sketch the graph of these two. Now I like to uh, uh, walk with degrees. It is my preference. So I like to rewrite this down as x and 180. Okay. Now we have to first draw this graph y equal to tan x. So pretty easy. We just have to replace the values of x in the value of the function. So one by one. So one thing is good to know is for tan curves, you have a vertical asymptote. You have to know this Okay, so tan curves always have a vertical asymptote. Now we can just try out and see where it is, okay? So first value, y equal to tan x tan 0 will be 0. That's the first value. Now we have this one, tan pi by 4, so pi by 4 will be 1. 1 is right here. Then we have tan pi by 2, that will be math error. So whenever you see math error, it means that this is where our vertical asymptote is for the tan curve. 
So you have to draw this line here to show that this is the vertical asymptote. Now, what is a vertical asymptote? It is basically a line where your tan curve will be approaching, but it will never touch the line. That's why it is called a vertical asymptote. So we can draw this here. So try your best to make it smooth. So we have to join these two. In this direction. So you will never touch this line, it will only approach this line. Now continue for this one. 3 pi by 4, so tan. 3 pi by 4, that will be minus 1. And then we have pi, so tan of pi will be 0. Again, same thing, but the other direction, that will be. It will only approach this asymptote. So that is your tan curve. That is done. Now for this one, we have to do step by step. So we have y equal to 1 plus 3 sine 2x. Now, we have to first look at this number here. This is called the baseline. We have to draw the line y equal to 1 first. So this will be the baseline. Okay, and is y equal to 1. Of course, you will be using a pencil, and then you have to erase this in the end. So for now, it helps you to draw your curve. Now, this one is called the amplitude 3. So we count 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 in both directions. And also, draw a line here to guide you for your graph. Okay, so this gives you an indication to tell you that your graph will be only between those two values. You will not go up or below these two lines. Okay, that's only an indication. Now, next step is to plug in those values in your graph. So for the first value will be 1 plus 3 sine of 0. That will be 1. It will be right here. Then we have 1 plus, this is pi by 4. So we have 1 plus 3 sine 2 times pi by 4. That will be 4. Okay. And then pi by 2. That will be 1. And 3 pi by 4. That will be what? So 1 plus 3 sine 2 times 3 pi by 4. That will be minus 2. And then pi. That will be. 1 plus 3 sine 2 pi. That will be 1. So as you can see, we have this shape for our sine curve. So try your best to make it as smooth as possible. Okay, um, this one will be like this. Okay, so this is your tan curve, something like this. Okay, uh, Label this as y equal to 1 plus 3 sine 2x. Something like this. Okay, so that will be your tan curve. Now, question, we have to write down the coordinates of the stationary points on the curve this. So it means the maximum or the minimum points. So by observation, you can see this is where it is right here and right here those two will be the stationary points this is the point pi by 4 and 4 and you will have 3 pi by 4 and that will be minus 2 these will be the stationary points on this curve now this is part 2 now part 3 we have to find the number of solutions of the equation tan x equal to this. Now if you observe, this is the same curve that we have just drawn on the graph. So it means we have to find the point of intersections between those two. Now if you observe, we will have one point of intersection here. And then we have here. And then here. 
So you will have three points of intersection. So your answer will be three for number of solutions. Now let's move on to question number five. Here we have a pilot flies his plane directly from a point A to a point B. It is a distance of 450 km. The bearing of B from A is 30 degrees. A wind of 80 km per hour is blowing from the east. Okay. Given that the plane can travel at 320 km per hour in still air, find part 1, the bearing on which the plane must be steered. So whenever you have this kind of question, always make a drawing to understand what's happening and proceed step by step. Okay, so pretty easy. So first, let's make a drawing for what's happening. This is our north line. This is basically just the quadrants. So first thing we know is we have a point A here, right? And then we know that the point B, it is from A on a bearing of 30. So, from A, 30 should be somewhere about this point. So, this is point B, for example. This is 30. Right. Now, it says we have a wind which is blowing from the east. Now, you have to know, this is what direction is from the east. <laughs> right. So, this is north, south, east, and west, right? So from the east will be from this direction, so towards the west. The wind will be blowing from the east, so pushing in this direction. Right. Now the plane of course will have to be, so we want to go to B, but we have to steer the plane in this direction, so when the wind pushes you, you will eventually go to B. So basically, the plane will be going in this direction. Okay. Now you want to find the bearing of um, on which the plane must be steered. So you want to find this angle. Right. Now the values we know is the wind is 80. Right and the speed in still air is 320 okay so we want to find this blue angle so step by step the first thing I can do is I can see what I can derive from the other points so let's go to your point B and make a north line here okay so this has to be 90 because this is vertical and horizontal and you observe that this if this is 30 this also has to be 30 so this whole angle here will be 90 plus 30 that is 120 okay and now for you to find this angle you must first find the small angle let's call this one alpha so how can you find alpha? So by observation, you can see we have a triangle A, B. Let's call this one um, W. We have triangle A, B, W, right. We know this side and we know this side. So we know this side and the angle opposite. We know this side, we want to find this. So we have to use the sine rule, right. So you will have 320 over sine of 120 is equal to 80 over sine of alpha okay so now we have to make sine of alpha become the subject of formula so we have to cross multiply you will have sine of alpha will be 80 times sine of 120 divided by 320 so you send this up you send this down you send this here so you have this equation now Alpha will be sine inverse of the value, which is 80, so we have to use degrees here, sine 120 divided by 320. That will be 0 0.217. Sine inverse of that will be 12.5.
So the angle alpha here is only 12.5 degrees. So the bearing will be the blue angle. It will be 30 plus 12.5. That will be 42.5. So your answer will be 42.5. Okay, that will be your answer for part one. Now for part two, we have to find the time taken it flies from A to B. Okay, now we know the distance AB. Distance has been given to you by 450 km per hour. To find the time, you have to use your formula, which is speed is distance divided by time. So time will be distance divided by speed. Distance is 450. So we have to find the speed. So what is the resulting speed? So we have to find this speed right here. Okay, this is called the resultant speed. So we can find this by using again the sine rule. Okay. So if you know this is 12.5, this has to be pretty easy. 180 minus 12.5 minus 120, that will be 47.5. So now we know this angle, we want to find this side. We know this angle, we have this side. So same thing, we can use the sine rule. So SR over sine of 47.5 is equal to 320 over sine of 120. So SR will be, we send this over here, you will have 320 times sine of 47.5 divided by sine of 120. That will be 272.427 this is your speed so to find the time you have to do 450 divided by this value that will be 1.65 1.65 will be your answer for the time taken that will be question number five let's move on to question number six so in the expansion of this function, where p is a positive integer, right, the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1.5 times the coefficient of x cubed. So we have to find the coefficient of these two terms. So first one, let's find the term in x squared. So that will be 6 choose something. The first term is p, and we have x. For us to get something in x square, we have to have square here. If this is 2, it has to be 2 here, and this has to be 4. So 6 choose 2 is what? That will be 15. That will be p power 4 x square. That will be 15 p square x, so p power 4, sorry, and then x square. So this is your coefficient of x square. Now I will determine x cube. So one by one again, that will be six. Choose something. We have p, and then we have x here. So for us to get something in p, so in in cube, we have to have three here, and this will be three here as well. And you have three here. That will be six choose three. That should be twenty. Times p power three, times x cube. So we have twenty p cube x cube this is your coefficient of x cube so now we know the coefficient of x square is equal to 1.5 times the coefficient of x cube so let's do this we have 15 p power 4 is equal to 1.5 times 20 p cube simplify you will have 15 p power 4 is equal to 30 p power 3. Now we can simplify. Divide by p power 3 everywhere. This will be cancelled out. You will have 1 remaining. So p will be equal to 2. This is your value of p for part 1. So right now we have 2 plus x power 6 as your function. Now question. Use your value for p, which is 2, to find the term which is independent of x, which has no x, in this expansion. Now we have to know what is this expansion. So that will become... So first let's find this expansion 
for the term until x squared because if you expand this you will have something like this 1 minus 2 over x plus 1 over x squared so since we have x squared here we can expand this until the term in x squared so first term will be 6 choose 0 2 x that will be 0 that will be 6 6 choose 1 2x that will be 1 5 6 choose 2 that will be 2 4x 2 plus going on we don't need the rest we just need until x squared because we have only until x squared here so simplify 2 power 6 will be what will be 64 plus 6 choose 1 times 2 power 5 will be 192 x plus 6 choose 2 times 2 power 4 will be 240 x squared replace those values in this equation you will have 64 plus 192 plus 240 so now you want the term which is independent of x so we can take 1 times this which you can take this one times this one and then this one times this one so you will have 1 times 64 minus 2 over x times 192x plus 1 over x square times 240 x square now we have to simplify this will go away so 64 minus 2 times 192 plus 240 that will be minus 80 will be your answer for question number six now let's move on to question number seven a particle p moves along the x-axis such that its distance x is given by this formula so part one you have to find the greatest distance from p of p from o so you have to find the max value of x so you guys must know at max value or at minimum value we know what we know that dx by dt has to be zero so you have to find dx by dt so here we have x as you can see it is a fraction so we have to use the quotient rule so dx by dt will be the first thing you have to write down the denominator as it is multiply by d by dt of the numerator then minus the numerator multiply by d by dt of the denominator and then everything divide by the base which is the denominator square okay so now we have to simplify that will be t square plus 1 times 1 minus t times 2t okay and then divide by t square plus 1 square now simplify again that will be t square plus 1 minus 2t square divided by t square plus 1 square now simplify t square minus 2t square will be minus t square over t square plus 1 square this is your answer for dx by dt so now we have to equate that to 0 so equate to 0 that will give us so you can see you will have 1 minus t square is 0 so now we have to solve the equation so t square is equal to 1 so t will be plus minus 1 now since t is time, time cannot be negative, so your answer will be t is equal to 1 for this. Now, this is not your final answer. We have to find the distance at t equal to 1. Distance is x. We have to find the value of x when t is equal to 1. x is equal to 1 over, which is the equation here, t over t square, 1 square plus 1. That will be 1 over 2. That will be 
0 0.5 meters. Okay, this is your answer for part one. Now for part two, we have to find the acceleration of P at the instant when P is at the greatest distance from O. So we know that when P is at this place, the value of T is 1. So we have to find A when T is equal to 1. So first, how do you find A? So you guys must know, A is equal to dV by dt. Okay, so now we know V already. So V is equal to, V is given by the first part, which is dx by dt is V, which is 1 minus t square divided by t square plus 1 square. That is your value of v. So we have to find dv by dt. So a will be what? So again, we have a fraction. We have to use the quotient rule. <laughs> OK. So first, we write down the denominator as it is. Then multiply by d by dt of the numerator. Then minus the numerator as it is. And multiply by d by dt of the denominator. And then everything divide by the denominator square. That will be t square plus 1 square. So let's see what do we have. A will be t square plus 1 square multiplied by, that will be minus 2t. Then here we have minus 1 minus t square, then you will have 2 t square plus 1 times 2t. And everything divided by t square plus 1 square. Now you can simplify if you want to. We can simplify, go ahead. a will be, now be minus 2t times t square plus 1 square. Then we have minus 1. So we have 2 here, we can take 2 outside, 2 times this will be. So let's take this behind, you have 1 minus t square, t square plus 1, times 4t, and everything, divide by t square plus 1 square. Now, we have to find the value of a at t equal to 1, so we place the value of t equal to 1 in the equation. So you will have a is equal to this is minus 2, that will be 1 plus 1 square, that will be 2 squared is 4, minus, so we put 1 here, 1 minus 1 will be 0, so everything will be 0, and we have to divide by 1 plus 1 square, will be which value? So let's see what do we have, so basically from what I can see, so this has to be this, this, and see what else. So simplify to what? Let's see. This is 0. That is good. Um, 1 square is 1 square. Plus 1 is 2. 2 square is 4. And here we have minus 2. Times 1 is 1. That will be minus 2. And 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 square is 4. So you will have minus 8 over 8, which is minus 2 meters per second square. Okay, this is the answer for part two of the question. So let me ch let me check again because I think I may have made a mistake in the um, expansion, but let me double check just to make sure. So first thing here I have this, then we have, this will be the base, that will be this, and this here, and this here, okay, divide by square, okay. Okay, I see now I made a mistake because this is square, we have to square this, that will be 4. Okay, that will be 4 actually. Because we have to square the base, that will be square, square of this will become 4. So basically here you will have 16. So you have minus 8 over 2 power 4 is 16, let's check. That will be 16. So your answer will be minus 0 0.5 meters per second square. That is your acceleration. As you can see, 
I made a mistake here. We have to square the base. The base is this value. Square of square will become 4. Okay, that is your answer for part 2 of question number 7. Let's move on to question number 8. So given that we have this expression is the same as this, find the value of each of the integers a, b, c, p. Okay, so first step, we have to let f of x equal to 3x cubed plus p x squared, so 5x squared, and p x plus 8. So from observation, you can see that here we have a factor of the expression already. So we know that x plus 2, x minus 2 is a factor. We equate to 0, x will be equal to 2. So this means if you take the value of x of 2 inside, it will give you 0 because it is a factor of the expression. Replace, you will have 3, that would be 2 cubed, 5, 2 squared plus p, 2 plus 8, that will be 0. Simplify, 3, 2, power, 3, plus 5, 2 square, plus 8, that will be 52, plus 2p, equal to 0. From this you will have p is minus 26. That's your value of p. So right now we have f of x is equal to 3x cubed, plus 5x square, minus 26x, plus 8. So we have to find this these values, so we have to divide by your factor. So you have to do long division. Okay, so you have 3x cubed plus 5x squared minus 26x plus 8. Your factor is x minus 2. So let's do division. So how can you make x become 3x cubed? You have to multiply by 3x squared. So you will have 3x cubed minus 6x squared. These two will cancel out. 5 minus minus 6 will be 11x squared minus 26x plus 8. Now, how can you make x become 11x squared? You have to multiply by plus 11x. You will have 11x squared minus 22x. That will go away. Minus 26 plus 22 will be minus 4x. Now we have to make this become this. You have to multiply by minus 4. You will have minus 4x plus 8. And that will be 0. So from this we conclude that f of x can also be written as x minus 2 times 3x squared plus 11x minus 4. Well, the value of a is 3, b is 11, c will be minus 4, and p is minus 26. This is the values that we need to find. These are integer values. Now, part 2. Using your answer from part 1, factorize this completely. So, from part 1, we have f of x is equal to x minus 2 times 3x squared plus 11x minus 4. So we have to factorize this part. If you can observe, this one is a quadratic equation. So we have 3x times x. 4 is 4 times 1. So let's take 4 here and 1 here. To get minus, to get plus 11, sorry, we have to have plus 12 and minus 1. So this will be the complete factorization of your f of x. And this is your answer for question number 8. Let's move on to question number 9. The diagram shows four straight lines, AD, BC, AC, and BD. So we have this, 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 and this. So these are straight lines. Now we can see the line here intersect at O, and the angle AOB is pi by 6 radians. Okay. Now we have AB is an arc of a circle, center O and radius 10. Okay. And uh, CD is an arc of a circle, center O, and radius 20. Okay. 
Now part one, we have to find the perimeter of A, B, C, D. Perimeter means the distance around A, B, C, D. So this distance around. So first thing we can find them one by one. First let's find the value of A, B. A, B is length of arc. We can use your formula to find that. So first is A, B. Can be found by using formula. That will be arc length is equal to r times theta. r is 10, theta is the angle, pi by 6. That will be 5 pi by 3. That is AB. Now part 2, we can find this length, CD. Again, same thing, same formula, which is arc length, CD. Arc length, that will be r theta. r is 20, angle will be pi by 6. That will become 10 pi by 3. So one thing you have to know is that when they meet, this angle here will be the same as this one because it is opposite to each other. That's why it will be the same. This is also pi by 6. Now since this is, this is a straight line, this has to be 180. So this will be. So this is straight line. Everything here will be 180. So this will be. 180 minus this, which is pi minus this will be what value? So let's check. Pi, which is 180, minus pi by 6. That will become over 6. You will have 6 pi minus pi. That will be 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. So if you want to find in degrees, 5 times 180 divided by 6, that will be 150. Okay. So now this angle and this angle are also the same because they are opposite to each other each other that is your uh, angle now for part three we have to find bc and ad so we know that these two are the same right as you can see they are the same same angle same side same angle same side so these two sides have to be the same so let's find one of them so for part three we know that uh, bc is equal to ad so we can just find one of them. So let's find the side um, BC. So how can you find BC? If you observe, you have triangle COB. You know these two sides, you know the angle in between. You can find them by using the cosine rule. So cosine of the angle, which is 5 pi by 6, is equal to the two sides. We have 20 square plus 10 square minus BC square divide by 2 times 20 times 10. So we have to make BC become the subject, so we have to simplify. This will be this value here. So cross multiply, you have 400 cos of 5 pi over 6. That will be 20 square plus 100 square. So 20 square plus 10 square. That will be 500 minus BC square. So we make BC become the subject of formula. You will have 500 minus 400 cos of 5 pi over 6. So 500 minus 400 cos of 5 pi over 6. That will become 100.41. One. So we have to set our thing in radians. So I think I made a mistake. I have to use radians, right? So 500 minus 400 cos of 5 pi over 6. That should be this value. So, so make sure your angle is right. It is in radians. So from this, you know, BC has to be square root of this value. So square root, that will become 29.1. That is your value of BC. Now we know that BC and AD are the same, so we can add them together now. So the perimeter will be 5 pi over 3 plus 10 pi over 3 plus 2 times 29.1. Yeah, so 5 pi over 3 plus 10 pi over 3 plus 2 times, answer, that will be 73.9 centimeters correct to 3SF. That is your perimeter of this shape. 
Now for part two, we have to find the area of ABCD. Okay, so how do you find the area of ABCD? So again, we find this piece by piece. So this one is number one, number two, number three, and number four. Now because these are the same, so we know that number three is equal to number four, right? But first let's find number one and two. So one is what is the sector. So how do you find area of sector? Formula half r square theta. Okay, that will be half times ten square times the angle pi by six. That will be twenty six point one seven nine nine. Now number two, same formula because it is also a sector of a circle. That will be half r square theta half times 20 square times pi by 6 that will be 104.7198 now 4 and 5 are the same so let's find 3 so 3 will be area of a triangle that will be half times sine of the angle in between which is 5 pi by 6 and time the two sides that will be 20 times 10 half times sine of 5 pi over 6 times 200 that will be 50 so now 3 and 4 the same so we have 2 4 is also 50 so now the area everything together will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 you have to add everything you will have 26.1799 plus number 2 104.7198 plus 3 is 50 and plus 4 is 50 that will give you 230 230.8997 now correct your 3 SF will be 231 this is your area of this shape of course you have to write centimeter square okay now let's move on to question number 10 so here we have to solve we have to find the value of x. Now you can see we have tan square x minus 2 sec x plus 1 equal to 0. Now we have to find a way to make everything become the same. So what do I mean? Let's look at our list of formula. You will find something here. So you will find that we have this formula sec square a equal to 1 plus tan square a. So let's write this down. You have sec square x for example equal to 1 plus tan square x so we have this here and we also have this here so let's make this become subject you will have tan square x is equal to sec square x minus 1 replace this value by this in the main equation so you will have sec square x minus 1 minus 2 sec x plus 1 equal to 0 now these two will will cancel out so minus 1 plus 1 cancel out so you will have sec square x minus 2 sec x equal to 0 now we can just factorize you will have sec x outside then you will have sec x minus 2 equal to 0 now we can solve you will have sec x is equal to 0 and sec x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now what is the value of sec x? You have to know it is 1 over cos x. So this means cos x is equal to 0 or cos x is equal to 1 over 2. Now we have to uh, find those values. So first let's set this to degrees because your domain is in degrees. So here we have x will be cos inverse of 0 that will be 90 degrees but you have to know something is that you have to know uh, cos when it is positive or zero it will be in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant this is the value of the angle and this is 360 minus the angle that will be 360 minus 90 that will be 270 Okay, and for this one same thing it is positive 
it will be in your first quadrant and your fourth quadrant. So x can be cos inverse of 1 over 2. That will be 60 degrees. You can check. Yeah, 60 degrees. But also it can be 300. Okay. So this is your answer for question number 1. So it will be 60, it will be uh, 90, 270, and 300. So if you check the marking schemes, they only gave you values for these two, right? But they did not give you values for these two. So the reason why I also put these two is because if you were to divide by this, you will eliminate one of the possible values. But I think they did not um, put this in the marking scheme. But that's okay as well. As long as you have these two in your answer, you should be fine. That is part one. Now for part two, we have to solve this equation. So here we have uh, cos square 3y equal to 5 sine square 3y. So whenever you have something of sine and cos on the same equation, you want to do is divide by cos 3y. But here we have square, we divide by cos square 3y everywhere. You will have 1 is equal to 5 tan square 3y and from this you will have tan square 3y is equal to 1 over 5 and you will have tan 3y is plus minus root of 1 over 5 okay so let's see your answers so your first one you have tan 3y is equal to minus this or you have tan 3y is equal to this value. So whenever we have a negative value here, I like to use a trick where I use theta as my angle. So this will be negative. So when tan is negative, it will be in your second quadrant and your fourth quadrant. This will be this gradient. So we have 2 pi minus theta, and this is pi minus theta. So first I will find the value of theta, which is not your answer. It is tan inverse of the positive value of 1 over 5. So we first ignore the negative. This has to be in radians. According to your domain, it is radians. Tan inverse of root 1 over 5. That will be 0 0.421. So 3y will be according to your quadrants. First one will be pi minus 0 0.421. That will be 2.72. And then 2 pi minus 0 0.421. That will be 5.86. Okay. Now next one to find the value of y. So 2 divided by, uh, so 2.72 divided by 3. 0 0.9 0 7 5.86 divided by 3 1.95 okay, and for this one it is already positive so we don't need to go through this through this way we can just find 3y is equal to tan inverse of the value and that will be 3y will be 0 0.421 now when tan is positive it will be in the first quadrant which is just the angle and in the third quadrant, which is pi plus the angle. So plus 0 0.421 plus pi, that will be 3.56. So y has to be divided by 3. Zero point four zero, and 3.56 divided by 3, 1.1. Okay, so here we go. We have the answers. Y is equal to 0 0.140, then 0 0.907, 1.19, and 1.95 for the values of Y for this equation. Now you have to check if these values are inside the domain, 0 and 2. So yes, they are inside the domain. These will be your answer for part 2. Let's move on to part 3 of this question. So here we have to solve this equation for the value of z. Now, we have cosec 
But first, let's make this become subject of formula. So you have cosec of the angle z plus pi by 4 equal to 2.5. Right. Now, what is cosec? Cosec x, for example, it is 1 over sine x. So you have sine of the angle, which is z plus pi by 4, has to be 1 over 2.5. Now, if sine is positive, it will be in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. The first is just the angle, and this one has to be uh, pi minus the angle. Since this is already positive, I can just find this one directly, which is sine inverse of 1 over 2.5. So 1 divided by 2.5, sine inverse of the value will be this value. 0.412 so since we also have this one which is pi minus 0.412 that will be 2.73 so z will be 0.412 minus pi by 4 that will be minus 0.373 and 2.73 minus pi by 4 that will be 1.94. So now, whenever you have a negative value, you can try to plus 2 pi to see what happens. Minus 0 0.373 plus 2 pi, it will be 5.91. So since this value is inside of the domain, so we will take it. So your answer will be z is equal to 1.94 and 5.91. Now, for you to understand what does negative mean, so negative means only the direction. Usually, we measure this way as positive value, but when you go negative, it will be in this direction. That's what negative means, we'll be measuring in this direction. Now, by adding 2 pi, we, ju we are just trying to give 2 pi direction to this to give you the other angle. So now, at 2 pi, you have a positive value, and we check if it is inside the domain. Now, this one it is, so we'll take these two values as your answer. That is your question number 10. Now, question number 11, we have to answer only one of those, but of course, um, I'll be doing both of them to see um, what is the answer. So first one here we have, the tangent to the curve y at the point x meets the x-axis at the point p. So we have to find the point p. So first thing, if you want to, you can draw something to help you to understand what's happening. So first, we have our y and x-axis. So we have a graph here. Let's see, for example, this is our graph, for example. And we have a point x, which is here, right? And we have a tangent to the curve, which is a line that passes to that point. It cuts our x-axis at point p, so we have to find this point p. Okay, so basically, we have to find the point of intersection of our tangent and the x-axis. So first, we must find the equation of the tangent, okay? Now, to find the equation of a tangent, we know that tangent is a straight line. We have to first find its gradient. So gradient of tangent is equal to dy by dx. So we know y is given to us by 5 exponential x plus 3 exponential minus x. From this, dy by dx will be equal to 5 exponential x minus 3 exponential minus x. So we have to find this value at the value of x given by ln 3 over 5. So you have 5 exponential ln 3 over 5 minus 3 exponential minus ln 3 over 5. Now we can simplify this if you observe. Minus ln 3 over 5 is minus 1 ln 3 over 5. Now we can send this as power, you will have ln 3 over 5 power minus 1. Now if you want to make this become positive, you have to flip the inside upside down, become 5 over 3 power 1. So you will have 5 exponential ln 3 over 5 minus 3 exponential ln 5 over 3. So now observe, when you have this, it will cancel out. Okay? 
so exponential ln or when you have ln of e it will cancel out so you will have 5 times 3 over 5 minus 3 times 5 over 3 so cancel 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 you have 3 minus 5 will be minus 2 so you have find out that the gradient is equal to minus 2 of the tangent okay now the next step is we have to find the passing point so we know that the point x is given by ln 3 over 5 we have to find the point y replace back in your equation y will be 5 exponential ln of 3 over 5 plus 3 exponential minus ln of 3 over 5 you will have 5 exponential ln 3 over 5 plus 3 exponential ln 5 over 3 same thing happened here okay so again same thing again these two will cancel out so you will have 5 times 3 over 5 plus 3 times 5 over 3 cancel out cancel out you'll have 3 plus 5 will be 8 so we have the passing point ln of 3 over 5 and 8 and we have all the gradient as well which is equal to minus 2 so now we can find the equation of the tangent so let's do that so equation will be y minus the y coordinate over x minus the x coordinate and will be 3 over 5 equal to the gradient now we have to cross multiply you will have y minus 8 is equal to minus 2x plus 2 ln of 3 over 5 okay so that will be the equation of the tangent now if you want to simplify you can of course do that you will have y is equal to minus 2x plus 2 ln 3 over 5 plus 8 so now you have to find the point P the point P is on the x-axis so at x-axis what do you know you know the value of y has to be 0 so that will be 0 equal to minus 2x plus 2 ln of 3 over 5 plus 8 so 2x will be 2 ln 3 over 5 plus 8 x will be ln 3 over 5 plus 4 the point P will be ln 3 over 5 plus 4 0 that is your point P that is question part 1 now let's move on to part 2 now we have the area enclosed by the region by the curve sorry enclosed by the curve the y-axis and the positive x-axis and the line this is equal to 12 so basically if you have your y-axis and the positive x-axis our curve is like this for example right so from 0 to your point A the area enclosed here is given by 12 so we have to have this equation so how can you find this area you can find this by integration so let's write this down so part 2 so integration between a and 0 of the curve y y is given by 5 exponential x plus 3 exponential minus x dx it is going to be the value of 12 so we have to use this to find the equation that we have for a so let's do this one by one this will become 5 exponential x minus 3 exponential minus x between a and 0 that will be 5 exponential a minus 3 exponential minus a minus 5 exponential 0 minus 3 exponential 0 that will be 5 exponential a minus 3 over exponential a minus 5 minus 3 is 2 and this has to equal to 12 okay so now we have to multiply by so we have to simplify first you will have 5 exponential a minus 3 over exponential a is equal to 14 
Now to eliminate the denominator, we have to multiply by exponential everywhere. So you will have 5 exponential 2a minus 3 is equal to 14 exponential a. Now lessen everything to one side, you will have 5 exponential 2a minus 14 exponential a minus 3 is equal to 0. And as you can see, this is, you have to show this, shown as required. Now part 3, hence find the value of a. So we have to use this answer to find the value of a. So pretty easy. We can first let u equal to exponential a. If you want to, if, you, uh, if that helps you to understand, you will have 5u square minus 14u minus 3 equal to 0. Now this one is a simple quadratic equation. Now we have to factorize. That will be 5u times u, and 3 is 3 times 1. Now to get minus 14, we have to have minus 15 plus 1. So your answer can be u can be minus 1 over 5, or u can be 3. Now, we, of course, we don't want to find u, we want to find a. We place u back with this. Exponential a will be 1 over 5. Exponential a will be 3. Now, exponential cannot be negative, so this value will be rejected because it is negative. We only have this one remaining, so a will be ln of 3 as your value. And this is your answer for question part 3. Done. Okay, so now we have to try the other one, which is uh, this one. So given that y is equal to this equation, we have to show dy by dx equal to this, where a is a constant to be found. So let's do step by step. So, so first thing we know is y is given by our equation 3 exponential 2x divided by 1 plus exponential 2x. So you have to find dy by dx. Okay, so dy by dx, it is a fraction, so you have to use the quotient rule. First, you have to write down the denominator as it is, multiply by d by dx of the numerator, then minus the numerator as it is, multiply by d by dx of the d denominator, which is 1 plus this. Then everything divide by the square of the denominator. So x here, square. So simplify, you will have 1 plus exponential 2x times 6 exponential 2x, right? And minus 3 exponential 2x times 2 exponential 2x. And everything divided by 1 plus exponential 2x squared. Now I'll simplify again. We can factorize. So let's simplify. You have 6 exponential 2x, 1 plus exponential 2x, you have minus 6 exponential 2x power 2, right? Because we have twice multiply, you have power 2. And everything divided by 1 plus exponential 2x squared. So factorize these out. You will have 6 exponential 2x outside, 1 plus exponential 2x minus exponential 2x, and then divide by 1 plus exponential 2x squared. So these two will cancel out. So you have 6 exponential 2x divided by 1 plus exponential 2x squared. That is your dy by dx. Now by comparison, you can see that the value of a has to be the value of 6. So a will be 6. OK? Now for part 2, let's see what do we have. We have to find the equation of the tangent again to the curve at the point where the curve crosses the y-axis. Okay, So if you make a drawing about this, so we have the y-axis, the x-axis. Now we have a curve that goes at the, uh, crosses the y-axis, Okay, this point. And we have to find the tangent that goes to this point. Okay, So this line. So to find the uh, tangent, 
equation we have to first find the gradient of tangent right so again we know that to find the tangent we have to find the gradient which is dy by dx now you guys know at y-axis what do you know you know that the value of x has to be 0 so dy by dx at x equal to 0 that will be 6 exponential 0 divided by 1 plus exponential 0 square that will be 6 times 1 divided by 1 plus 1 square that will be 6 over 4 that will be 3 over 2 so basically the gradient at this point is equal to 3 over 2 so now what is the passing point you know the value of x has to be 0 what is the value of y y is given by 3 exponential 0 1 plus exponential 0 that will be 3 over 2 so same thing for the value of y and the gradient as well okay so let's see what can we do now so let me check if I missed something um, no I did not miss anything seems to be fine the passing point will be 0 and 3 over 2 and this is your gradient so your equation will be y minus the y coordinate over x minus the x coordinate equal to the gradient now we have to cross multiply you will have um, 2y minus 3 is equal to 3x so 2y will be 3x plus 3 this is your equation of your tangent now let's move on to part 3 of the equation so let's see what do we want here using your results from part 1 okay find this and hence evaluate this okay so part 1 what did we have part 1 we can see we had used d by dx of y which is 3 this 1 plus this we had this value which is 6 exponential this 1 plus exponential 2x over 2 so how can we use this to find this now if you observe this means if you were to do the inverse which is integrate the right hand side right you would get the left hand side which is 3 exponential 2x over 1 plus exponential 2x so we have to use this thing to find this so now this thing and this thing are almost the same only difference is we have 6 here and here we don't have 6 now basically let's write this down from part 1 we realized that we had something which is integration of 6 exponential 2x over 1 plus exponential 2x square dx has to be 3 exponential 2x over 1 plus exponential 2x that's what we know from the first part now we want to find just this one so you want to eliminate the 6 so how can you do that you have to divide by 6 everywhere so you will have remaining will be integration of exponential 2x divide by 1 plus exponential 2x square has to be divide by 6 you will have exponential 2x 2 1 plus exponential 2x so this will be your answer for part 1 now we have to evaluate hence right hence evaluate this the limits will be ln of 3 and 0 of exponential 2x over 1 plus exponential 2x square that will be this thing let's take out half you will have exponential 2x over 1 plus exponential 2x bracket ln of 3 and 0 now replace the values inside you will have half will be outside exponential 2 ln of 3 over 1 plus exponential 2 ln of 3 and minus that will be exponential 0 over 1 plus exponential 0 that will be half that will be we send the 2 here you will have exponential so it will become exponential ln of 3 square which is exponential ln of 9 now these two 
will cancel out so you have only 9 remaining so you have 9 over 1 plus 9 minus 1 over 2 so let's see what do we have so 9 divided by 10 minus 1 over 2 times half the answer will be 0 0.2 for your value which is 1 over 5 or you can write 1 over 5 Okay, so that was the last question of this paper. I hope that was somewhat helpful. Um, as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.